fabulous shop. We started out with 64 players. We are down to the last 16. Stage two, welcome back to Battle Creek in Michigan. It is the Michigan Open. To our stop in the Predator Pro Billiard Series, presented by Samsung TV Plus. And what a match we've got in store for you. You couldn't have tuned in at a better time. Beside Tim DeRoyter, I'm Jim Weich. We're going to be bringing you all the action in this high-powered clash. It's an all-European affair. Max Lechner from Austria, Fedor Gorst from Russia. And what a match this promises to be, Tim. Yeah, both players on top of their form. So I'm expecting uh, quite some fireworks. We're playing best of three sets, races to four, and if... They tie Hill Hill in the final set. We'll have a deciding shootout, so let's go. Yeah, the format changes slightly now. No shootout after 1-1. One, one. Goes to the third and deciding set. Oh, look at this for a start. At three apiece, as Tim noted, the shootout. And we're in the Kellogg Arena here in the beautiful city of Battle Creek. Never been here. You want to make your way down here. Stunning scenery. A lot of green space, water, beautiful trees. I'm a big fan of this place. First time I've been here. I'm a big fan of that break, too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Hit it dead square in the face, made three balls and position on the one. Hit this one a little firm, though. This is a big matchup for Max. I actually commentated his first match, which was my first match on the TV table here, up against Roberto Gomez. He took Gomez out two straight sets. Yeah, definitely one of the nicer guys on the tour, Maximilian Lechner. Also, Gors, I've never had any problems with Gors, so <laughs> good guy too, but there was one picture on Facebook just recently. I saw Max lost the finals to Sanchez Ruiz last year in the U.S. Open. And while Sanchez is on the table screaming, Max is in the background with a huge smile. Like, he just lost the final of the U.S. Open, and he's smiling. Like, I, I like to see that. Well, they, they share that in common then because Gors la lost to Frances, Sanchez, Frances Ruiz as well. And uh, in Vegas, FSR. So they, uh, they have that in common. In the final 10-9, I commentated that match. That was a fantastic affair and ultra high caliber. So he's got a little straight on this eight ball, so he's gonna draw this back for the nine ball in the side. You don't wanna risk trying to force the cue ball off the rail and then now you hang up the eight. So better to play this. Cloth is still as good as new. A lot of play on this. Of course, day three, but the Predator Arcadia cloth stays new for quite a long time. Great playability, I've heard that. Yeah, Predator make the tables. Max is looking to fill the pockets. Yeah, such a such a steady player Lechner is. Very solid. Also mental in general he's quite sharp you don't really get to see him go on tilt like he's he's quite calm he's got a good competitive demeanor it's all business as you're going to see from Fedor Gorst as well these guys are consummate professionals and what a good way to start this match a break and run out Yeah, he's definitely looking to reproduce that break. It was couldn't have worked any better. Well, they're short races. So you really have to check your nerve at the door when you come into this one. No time to sort things out. You've got to be ready. Got to bring your game with you. 
and settle in fast. Yeah, easier said than done also. We've got a nice crowd here, a bunch of people around. You're playing in the arena. So it's not always easy to just go from the start. Early nerves are always there. Oh, it's made two balls again, and look at this for shape on the one. Yeah, just looking at Fedor in his chair, kind of looking on. You really, you don't ever want to wish your opponent any, any bad luck. You just want to be ready when the opportunity presents itself, and you're always assuming it will. Just slightly off angle on this one, though. Tim. I was so going to say this is right. a toughy. This is a little a putty. Tough. This shot. I was thinking cut this to the corner and play with inside and get in between the two and the nine. Really touchy and to play with just that little touch of inside is also scary. He's trying to cut it in the side. Might have to run into the ten, take a little gamble, but could be with high reward. He went right in between. Nice nudge on the six and great shot here. Yeah, just a smattering of applause, but I'll tell you what, that was well deserving of that. It, uh, what a touch, floating that ball in. Razor sharp cut. Well, he did play it with a comfortable speed to where he knew if he was going to run either in the, into the six or the ten. He was not going to bump it just a little bit out. He was really going to move the balls. Well, he was trying to get on the three in the same side. Did get an angle up table, so we will see him go three rails here. Long rail, short rail, long rail, running towards the six. There's one thing about playing a player like Fedor Gorst, who is basically acknowledged as one of the top players in the world. You know you've got to bring your A game to the table. only thing that I can think of which could be tricky is if he catches a piece of the A, then it's going to take a lot of speed out, and he might come up really short on the six, so he might get a long six ball. Missed the eight. And he did get straight on the six. Maybe he's able to punch the cue ball to the right a little bit. Don't want to leave yourself that much angle on the seven ball, especially with where the eight is. Tough to hold the cue ball with so much angle. So, expect him to force the cue ball. No. He's going to the short side, and I like how he's played that. Now, if he floats the seven in and gets to the center of the table, it's kind of natural. He plays with a touch of inside. Yeah, and these tables still with the new cloth. Pretty forgiving, really. Yeah, on his way for 2-0 lead here. Two really good breaks, and he's been connecting the dots really nicely so far. Yeah, two break and run outs, and he's parked Federer in his chair. Or at least he still needs to make two balls, but... Expecting him to be able to get this done. And there he goes. What a dream start for Max Lechner. Two break and run outs back to back. And if you're a Fedor Gorse fan, and I know there's a lot of them, they're still waiting. Both players had about half an hour on this match table prior to this last 16 clash. And 
I like the sportsmanship too. You know, they get on the table and then they just kind of throw the balls on the table for the next guy to hit some balls. And you see a lot of that. Well, also, they basically play the same tournaments. They see each other almost everywhere. At some point, you are going to get to know each other too. So there's always bonding. If you get to see each other 20 times a year, at some point you're going to meet people and they might start to like you. Perfect cue ball. Yeah, and look at this seven ball. Look where the one ball is too. He's going to travel a bit with that cue ball low to get back down for the two here. Yeah, I was just going to say, this layout needs some more work. Also, from the four to the five ball, I know it's next to each other, but could end up a little tricky. And I wonder, Fedor sitting in his chair, Tim, you just wonder if he's taking notes the way Max is breaking, because he has enjoyed as much success as we've seen anybody with the break on this main table. I am guessing he's going to... First, if, if Feder gets to break, that's always the thing. I'm guessing he's first going to try and do his own thing. Maybe once, just once. And then if it doesn't work, he might just go straight over to what Max is doing. Take a little bit off, a lot of stroke, and make sure you have a square hit. A little gamble here. Well, yeah, I don't think he's got the two. Yeah, the way he played that, it was... Definitely risky. It was, it was a really tough shot, too. He could have drawn straight over to the left side of the two, but then it's really speed sensitive. So he was gambling, I think, either way. Now, looks like he's got a small angle to the short rail, so I think if he makes a two, he's going to play safe on the three. But he needs to make sure he makes this one so he stays in control. Oh. I was almost guessing he would go he would go and get on the three ball. So now I think he's gonna cut the three to the right long rail, trying to get the eight and the ten in front of it, and then bring the cue ball two rails, possible three rails behind the four, but then he will have to hit it really thin. Because he, he's gonna play the other way around, bang the three ball down behind the five. I think he's found cover. The only thing with this shot, though, is most of the time it lines up for a kick and stick over the sh bottom short rail. Feather is pointing at getting there behind the eight, so I'm guessing he can feather, feather, feather the <laughs> left piece of the three. Yeah, looks like it. I wouldn't mind this at all. Is the speed okay? And came up short. Hasn't left an open shot, but he knows there's not much control. You know, he's giving opportunities to Max to lock him up. Yeah, that was a bit of a let off. Called the bank on the three. It's probably going into the rail. Bump the four over to the short rail and leave the cue ball where the four ball is now, just in case if he doesn't make it. No. He's played a good cue ball, though. Well, I was a witness to some jump shots that Fedor Gorse played in Vegas, and for me, he's the best I've seen. Yeah, he is deadly with the jump cue. He is really close to the five ball, though, so this is very tough. Well, there it goes, and look at how he held the cue ball there. Played it with so much draw to go around the angle super short and be able to draw, to hold the cue ball there. Beautiful effort, and could be 
the right moment for him to get the first game on the board. Well, and sees the initiative. And what a shot he had to play to do that. Just a little follow on this five ball. Would like to have less angle on the six, but he's almost straight on the five. So I'm guessing he's going to play this two rails, twice the long rail. Don't really like to play with draw and try to kill the cue ball especially on the new cloth can get a little scary you can hit the 10 by accident so he's playing top spin maybe a hair of left goes to real center of the table is already okay but he would like to be a little further nicely done and he creates so many opportunities by being such a good jumper where other people are really in trouble, he makes something happen and then steals a game somewhere. Well, it's hard not to be impressed by how well he played. As I said, he lost to Sanchez Ruiz there, but man, he did play good. And the jump shots that he executed, and you got an example right away of how talented he is with that short cue. So here it is. Even though Max was in control, this wreck, it's Feder Gorst. 2 1. He's trailing, but definitely looking to level the score soon. Now we'll get a chance to see what he can do with the break. Yeah, I'm expecting. He breaks a little different, though. I. Usually Max breaks with a big pop, like a really big impact break popping the cue ball. But by the looks of it, he changed to this format. Level cue, just trying to transfer all the speed into the balls instead of trying to hit it hard. So I think Feather is going to try and do the pop first because that's what he usually does. And then if it doesn't work this time, then he might switch over straight away. Watching the first three racks here to me this is why you have to be so mentally tough when you play this game at this level max has done nothing wrong gorst has absolutely seized the initiative away from him and we'll see what he can do with it but i mean lechner played a great shot you know went for the long bank and put him behind the five just as he wanted see that little pop well he made a ball and did he get on the wall? I don't think he's... No, he didn't get it. And also, he is bringing the jump cue to the table, but where the 5 and the 6 are at now, it's also a little awkward jumping this way. Oh, he's going all in, though. Maybe that 6 ball is making him elevate just perfect to pass a 3, so it might be helping in his way, but most of the time... It's just so awkward being close to those balls. Paul, oh, look at this. This is master class jumping. No, and again, the control, not so much executing the shot, but look at the control position to the two. Oh, and this is interesting shot. Little tap from Lechner on his leg. Because 
getting on that four could have been a little tricky, could have been a little annoying. Now he just feathered it a little bit over. Made his life a lot easier. So now I think he can go just one rail to center of the table. This should be a duck duck goose. Should be very obvious to run out all the balls next to each other. The only thing you could imagine is while pocketing the eight into the nine, losing control of the eight, but he's gonna position himself nearby. Don't really see anything happening here. Yeah, both of these guys play at such a high level that half a chance and you fully expect him to win with it. Yeah, two very elite players and what a treat to be able to sit and watch them. Yep, kill the cue ball very nicely and nice angle. I'm guessing he's gonna cross over to the left side of the 10. Of course you're playing to be straight in, but always play to get at least to the center of the table, hopefully a little bit further. Oh, he's gonna be on the rail. No, well, a little bit. Looked like he was gonna run a little bit further. On the rail is always awkward. Now he's just okay. And Fedor's first break and run to level things up. Back in the driver's seat now at 2-2 and with the break. Yeah, so far, almost no mistakes, only break and runs. High level. It's like I was saying earlier, It's uh, it's got to be very disheartening in one sense for Max. He's done nothing wrong and he's lost the last two racks. Did exactly what he wanted to. Tried for that long bank in the third rack. Parked that cue ball behind the five. He probably knew, just like we did, how well that Federer Gorse jumps. Being tall doesn't hurt either. No. That's why I jump horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think it's fair to say we have two very complete players in most of the skills in pool. They always know to find their way, so we're not going to see huge mistakes from either of them. Oh, making the one. Look at the two. What's that six ball going to do? Oh, it stayed there nicely. Yeah, like, just like last rack, the only thing I can imagine is while making the combo, losing the two ball, maybe it going to the short rail. He's queuing, he's bridging a little bit over the five ball, so it's not comfortable to play this soft and smooth stroke. Yeah, this isn't straightforward. This, this can go wrong. Well, he's going to shoot the two into the rail on the six, so he's most likely to play the two in the top left corner this way. But he knows this way he can actually strike the ball a little firmer, get his stroke out, instead of poking and trying to hold it. It's kind of scary. A little bit more time to think about it too after the break, 60 seconds before the shot clock starts winding down. Well, that's a big moment. And, yeah, great shot. Turned out perfect on the two ball as well. Maybe a little much angle. So if he is scared to not hold the cue ball, he could choose to run into the eight. He's looking at drawing it really close around the corner. I think I might like the bump on the eight, just soft. Top left. And a 5-10 on offer near the bottom corner. Okay, well, he's left himself. A little tester here. Tough cut to the side. 
I will have to go three rails around the eight. But indeed, the combo is right there on the ten ball. He's only two shots away to be on the hill. Or including the combos, three. Beautiful plate. Very nice shot. Well, now he'll look where to position that cue ball to leave himself an ideal shape to attack that 5-10. And he's showing you with his cue, just f straight through, follow through on this four, just below the seven. It's not straight in, but he placed himself very good here. Almost straight. If he shoots a five ball straight forward, then should be making it then. And it's a 3-2 lead for this Russian superstar. Two break and run outs now to match Lechner. And yeah. breaking for the first set. Yeah, what a set this has been so far. Only one safety battle, and most of it only break and runs. And as you noted, a full house. As the big names start inching their way towards the business end of this event and I think it's fair to say we're there we start seeing a lot more people in attendance even behind us this is a hockey rink or used to be a hockey rink the Kellogg Arena not used for hockey anymore but I can tell you whoever played here they would love to have seen this many people in attendance rack number six Well, another lifeline. And Max Lechner. Yeah, just when the doctor ordered a pill, it arrived in the form of a dry break, so Lechner out of his chair. Now they are using a shot clock, and it's not really easy here to determine, after the break they have 60 seconds, to determine where to play a push out to, because if you play well, play the wrong shot. If you give Feder something that he's gonna like, the next thing you know, you're you're hooked. You might be kicking. You leave something. You lost the set. So this is a very important moment. This is always the tricky aspect of professional pool for me. The push out. Is he going to try and push the six by the two? No, just push the cue ball to a tough position. And, well, there is a bank on the one. It's not something you would want to shoot. There is a carom into the three calling the ten ball in the corner. Possible safety in mind. Feather was looking at thinning the one ball really thin. Then kiss the three, and then to get underneath the eight. Yeah, this has to be paper thin on this one. If that one is near the cushion, touching the cushion, to avoid the double kiss, it's got to be paper thin. Well, and if you hit it a little bit thicker and the one comes up all the way to the center of the table, you might leave it as well. I think I would give this back. I don't like it that much. Oh, and... Looks like he just barely got the cover. I was doubting just because it looks like he might have a small window to nick it, but he hasn't really looked down between the five and the eight yet, Tim. He's looking at the one cushion to try and make the ball into the side pocket. Well, on the other side, it's a really super thin contact if it goes. So maybe he's just trying to 
go for something solid. Calling his extension. Vital that he hits us. Yeah, and I'm guessing, I'm wondering, okay, what side am I, would I want to be hitting the one? Because if you hit the left side, you're kicking the one up to the four. It's going to be in the open. If you hit the other, if you hit the top side of the one, the, the right side, you might make the one. Yeah, that's why he kicked it quite soft and ho, oh, he hit this so good. What a shot from Maximilian Lechner. Came with it on a really important moment. Yes, he did. Sweaty palm time. Yeah, we know he's going to hit the one real first. I'm not doubting him hitting the one. He's called, I think he's called the one ball in the bottom right corner. And I'm just wondering if he can get far enough to hit it that thick. And if the one hits the side pocket point, he might sell out. Could he have called the 10 here? Oh, and well, not something extremely easy. If he cuts the one ball in, he is going to hit the nine. Unless he's going to draw his way out of that. But it's extremely difficult on the length of the table. So he's probably going to play with top left. Or we'll just top spin. And I was going to say that three ball could have got a little push. And it did, so it is offering a good safety opportunity here, though. If you can get the cue ball to stick with the 10. No. Let me put some pressure on this as well. I think if he had more time, he would have probably tried to get behind the 9, 3, and the 10. But now he's just trying to not sell out at all and that's not easy to do with a 35 second shot clock 30 seconds well, that's pretty good so far on the other side Feder knows that he has left it just perfect for Max to thin the two not bring it up to the side pocket and get the cue ball behind the 9, 3 and the 10 Just center ball is just based on how thick you hit this. Not enough speed. Caught it really thin, just just a hair too short. Just letting Feather off the hook here a little bit. I mean, the way these guys play, it's a game of millimeters. Like that was about a half an inch from being perfect. And he's left Fedor a look at this too. It looks like he called a two ball in the top right corner. Cross corner bank. But it caught the double kiss. Yeah, he was trying to get the cue ball behind the seven five with the four. He caught the double kiss and well Fedor's looking a little how do you say this? A little aggravated. A little bit. Not sure if he's trying to fire himself a little bit up. Maybe he's a little bit low energy. Yeah, and a nice. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I, this is. I was going to say that's a very nice nudge on the 10 to open the 3 up as well. But he did not call that two ball. And Feather, he's going to like this. He's either going to play a safety. Yeah, he played a safe because he couldn't get on the four. Yeah, now 
Max you, is trapped. Well, and you know something? You just saw him slap himself with the cue. He never even considered that two ball going in. It wasn't He didn't feel like it was in the equation, but he knows now he should have. And I think I'm going to use the bottom short rail. Bottom short rail, short rail, long rail. He's going to try and push the nine together, probably with the six. Or is he going to try and get it with... He's just going to try and disturb something. Is that five? Maybe the five doesn't go in the side pocket anymore, but... Okay, Fe based on Feather's face, I think that five ball turned out to be tough from here. It's a little messy in this game. Yeah, but you know, where Max had control of it, he's relinquished that now to Fedor. So it's Fedor dictating the pace now in this rack, and it's a rack that would see him home, home and dry in the first set. And I'm not sure of his game plan here. Is the five nine ten set? You're right behind it, Tim. Is I, mean, I don't think so. I think that he's gonna cut the ten a little bit too much if he does that. He's gonna try and maybe draw into it, or does that five will still go to the side? Possible bank? Yeah, I was. Yeah, but you made it sound easy. <laughs> Yeah, he's called the bank, so that was always going to be in the plan. And then also, depending on how he gets on the six, that eight is not in the open, so it has to make eight ten combo. Former Derby City bank pool champion. Silky smooth, that bank. And you won't have to do much with the cue ball to land on the seven. Long shot, though. Only got to make it. Oh, there he goes. Still, he's not great. See, now he's trying to run into the nine, so he's got the eight in the bottom left corner. But he's really trying to scrape through this rack. This has been laying really difficult. Some big breathing before he went down on the shot. Oh, caught a double kiss and... Yeah, took not too little, bad. Yeah, took not a little gamble, though. He wasn't trying that. No, double kiss the nine, and it's actually worked out pretty good. He's still nicely on the eight. I think this nine, certainly it offers a combination to the ten, but I think it'll float between the ten and the cushion into that corner pocket, too. Yes, yeah. If he plays pocket speed, he should be able to make it. Well, he's going to be right behind it with the position he's going to play. Yeah, close to his work. Very comfortable to be in this position here. So, still got to be careful, though. If he touches the 10, either the left or real first into the 10, he might not even make it anymore. So, he made sure he really dug into the rail, and he's got it. So, Fedor Gorst wins the first set. Knows he's a little lucky. That's how it goes sometimes. He wins the first set 4-2. And I'm guessing... The players are going to go for, yeah, they're going to go for a little break. And so are we. We'll be right back.
Welcome back, everybody, and I hope you're not just joining us, because if you are, you missed a great opening set. One of the classiest sets I've seen in a long time, 4-2 in the end to Fedor Gorse, but there were no mistakes in that set at all. Lechner ended up fluking the two ball. That was it, just a fluke that he hadn't accounted for. And effectively, that was his only mistake, losing 4-2. That's how good Gorse played. And Gorse, with a dry break, well, this is where Lechner's got to pounce. Tim, that was that was first class, that first set. Yes, absolutely. Both players have not missed a single shot. So, and like I said in the beginning, I actually did not, I expected this to happen. Because both players have been playing really great lately, great results, been showing themselves really good. Max started the first set out with two break and run outs to vault into a 2 nothing advantage and Gorst regained the initiative with a great jump shot in the third rack then completed two break and run outs to go 3-2 in front and then they battled in that sixth rack and in the end it was Gorst again shooting his way across the finish line. But as good a set as I've seen in a long time. Just no mistakes. And I talked, tough, uh, sorry Tim, I said I, I talked about how mentally tough you have to be in this game and that was a good example of it. I was only gonna say it's quite tough to get on the four ball here. Oh, needs the cue to go. I think he just got it. Played it this way, wasn't sure if he could hold the cue ball in between the four and the 10 without getting behind the six, so that's why he played more speed. And a good angle now to drop down for the five. He just needs needs to be close to straight though on the five. If he leaves a big angle going down, that seven ball comes into play, so. That's why he played it two rails to get more straight on the five e more easily. Yeah, stay on the intended line. And staying on that line obviously affords a little bit more room for error in terms of pace. Now straight back up for the six. Oh. And I am not sure how this has happened. One of the very rare mishits from Lechner's cue. Well, I was wondering, he could have drawn into the short rail and back out. And he was trying to get straight over perfect. Kind of a stun draw, effectively, and just underhit it. Yeah. So we'll see him play safety here. Is he going to play the cue ball behind the nine? And that six ball needs to go a little bit more. The good thing for Max is that the six ball ended on the rail. So if Feather would go rail first... Now there's not a big pocket for the six. The bad news is I don't think the eight ball is catching the six completely. So Federer is coming with the jump cue. Yeah, knowing how well Federer jumps, when Max is playing safe, he knows he's got to get that cue ball right in behind the intended ball that he's looking to block the shot with. He's got to be right on it. Take away that jump shot. Oh, this is not funny anymore. Master class. Master class. He's made three already this match and he just keeps going. Tim, you gotta you gotta stay on top of the the YouTube highlight reel because Fedor Gorst is providing us with one here, and 
how to execute jump shots and with a high degree of difficulty. Oh, and in the first set, when he's made his first jump, that's to where he took off and broke and ran two more games and yeah, won three in total, so this could be a big swing. Well, if Max didn't know that his safety game has to be elevated, he knows it now. That's the best one we've seen yet. That yeah. had no room for error. Well, I think all, all his jumps were a little bit different, different skill. One, he had to really hold the cue ball and play it with perfect draw. The other one, he had to elevate a bunch. Now he had to go thin on the six ball and shape on the seven. Different class in at jumping, for sure. So he draws first blood in the second set. Yeah, and he broke dry. So if nothing else, Lechner can draw on that to see if he can get out of his chair. Full house here in the Kellogg Arena. Host Arena as it's been for three years running now, bringing all these world-class players to Battle Creek for the Predator Pro Billiard Series Tour Stop here in Michigan. Special atmosphere, isn't it? You get down to the knockout stages and all these big names that a lot of people, a lot of these amateurs that are here competing in the state championships, they only ever see on TV or on live streams. Now they get to see them in person, get their autograph. So Feder breaking from the other side now, two balls. And let's see, I think that two ball goes. Uh, looks like it goes, and the only thing is opening up that 7-9. If he could get a nice angle on the four ball now, he could open it up already. Yeah, that's the insurance policy right now for Max. Well, he came up a little short, so... He needs to have a plan B. If he f just floats a four ball in, he will have too much angle on the five ball to draw into the seven nine. So, and then he's already on the six to have a chance to open it up. So his percentages of getting out in this rack are significantly getting lower. Unless he's coming up with a super shot here. No. Needs to be really straight on the five. and It's so tough to say. I, I would say he will. He has a little bit too much angle to run into the seven nine now. But if he cheats the, spot, the bucket and he plays with a lot of left to throw the five ball to his right, then it could be possible. No, he decided to go around and then open him up and good chance has to come up with a super shot somewhere to open him up, but at least he's back at the table, Max. Yeah, it's also kind of heartening to know that he's human because he was playing like a robot. And this game is just not that easy.
Oh, also hit this a little firm. He might be just okay to play with top right. Play at the speed to where if you do not hit the 9-7, you might get on the short side of the 7 to play safe. Where he's looking now. Would he entertain the thoughts of trying to bank the 7 into the bottom right corner? I think that's quite risky. I think there's a big sellout on that shot too. If he could leave the cue ball in behind the 9. No, he can't now. He's got a little too much angle. He might play the safety here. Seven ball, three wheels out. Cue ball behind the nine. That would be the snooker philosophy. That's a very common snooker safety. He's just got to get it off those three cushions. The fourth, top, top left, and try and get that seven into the top cushion. That's assuming he doesn't take on the bank that is also an outside possibility. He's called for his extension. He wants to think about this a little bit more. Take the aggressive option? Or does, no, he's calling the bank. He's going full throttle here, Tim. Such is the respect, I think, that he has for Fedor. Half a chance, and he wants to go. Could be a just-in-case thing. Doesn't want to make the mistake he was made earlier. But he was aiming on the bank. Big shot. Straight in the hole, and look at how he got on the eight. What a big shot from Max Lechner. Well, he certainly didn't hit that one very good. He feels that it kind of skidded on him. Thank heavens for new cloth. And the pocket's playing a little bit more sympathetic than they will be once they get a little bit more worn. That must have skidded. Yeah, it's not the end of the world, though. He's got an okay shot on the nine, but this one is missable. If he got a little closer, it would not be missable. So preventing Feder to run away, leveling the score, one each, Max Wagner. And a chance to break, and he did have the the perfect spot to be breaking in the opening set. Took the first two racks in that first set, a break and run out. So. He'd love to put a couple together here, and if nothing else, put Gorst under a bit of pressure. Well, there's no reason to think that what has happened to Max in the first set cannot happen to Federer in the second set. Well, they'll wind it up. Rack number three in our second set. Hasn't Matt. been breaking for a little bit. Let's see if he can get those breaks out like in the first set. Uh, he won't be thrilled with that. Much worse. He's left a nice... Nice open shot at the one, not good at all. Max goes back to his chair, shaking his head. Yeah, tough though. I need a good shot on the two. Just the one to the two, like one, two, three, that's where the most of work has to be done. So he's going to stun this in the side pocket, go off the right long rail, and hopefully for Feder, maintain an angle to go up table for the three. 
He runs too far. No, he's got perfect. Yeah, and this is a roadmap too. Of course, we'll have to maneuver the cue ball a little bit around, but no big traveling anymore to do. Well, we saw him miss a pretty easy five in the last rack. So he'll have to bury the thoughts of that as he tries to run through the colors here. One rail and then back out. Yeah, what more can you say? Great chance for Feder Gorst and can play one rail off the short rail up table again for the six in the bottom right corner, stun the cubal down. This is one of the nicer layouts we've seen this match. Good speed. Only one American left in the last 16, Tyler Steyer. He's actually playing another one that's listed as an American, even though we know he's not really an American, Jovan Bustamante. I have him listed from Arizona, but he's Filipino, isn't he? Filipino. Yeah, good to see him back, though. He's also disappeared for a couple of years. Wasn't playing much, started to play a lot more recently, so good to see. Now, center of the table. Not too much angle on the nine, but you can get plenty of angle to move the cue ball back down for the 10. Top right on this. Well, he didn't look like he was happy with how it turned out, but I would be happy with this. <laughs> Two rails down, always running up to the 10. As you said, a road map. Just connect the dots and Gorst is gonna be back in front, two one. We had four break and runouts in the opening set. We're three racks into set number two and we haven't seen one yet. Yeah, five Polish players still in the last 16. Then four of them playing each other. Brutal draw. Viktor Zelensky and Konrad Justysen playing each other. Daniel Marshall and Wojciech Chevchik playing each other. So that's a pretty brutal draw. And we have Vitaly Patsura and Jan van Lierop, the Dutchman. Dennis Grabe is also still playing. Can't see who his opponent is from here, though. 
Georgi Georgiev playing Mieszko Fatunski, another interesting name in the last 16. Has been playing good lately, though, good results, but not really, yeah, hasn't been really showing it yet on the big, big stage, so good for him. Referee John Lehman passes the cue ball to Gorst, and we'll see if he can put a good break together here in rack number four. Two one is lead. Great white ball. And can you believe this? Like four yeah. balls on the break, cue ball somewhat in the center of the table, no shot on the two. Pool can be brutal sometimes. He's already checking to jump this two ball, maybe draw the cue ball back two rails. I would not be surprised no more at this point. <laughs> He may push into a little, yeah, and I, and I mean, obviously, he knows how well Fedor jumps, so he can't give it back to him. Well, I would 100% try myself. I'd be like, man, I, if I don't make it, sure, I, hopefully I get lucky, but he's not getting his jump cue off no more. When you've got a weapon like Gorst possesses with a jump shot, you're seeing an example of what he can do. Max doesn't look quite as comfortable as Federer does with that short cue. Yeah, left it in the and open. He the, knew. the chess match was just won by Fedor Gorst. It was a difficult jump, though. I really don't blame Max for going at it, but... And then, so let me ask you a question, Tim. Would you have bet against Fedor making it if he was the one playing it with somebody this else's one? with somebody else's money? <laughs> no, you know it was a tough one. It really was a tough one. This was not just straight draw. You really had to cut the ball, play with a lot of spin, get the cue ball over. This one was maybe tougher than the other three Fedor has made so far. So yeah. in that way, you could bet against it but we all know what he can do so well, i don't blame max for going not for at it. all i i think max absolutely made the right decision because there's no way i would have brought gorse back to the yeah. table with that short cue but having said that i wouldn't have bet on max getting it always easy to say after the fact of course yeah. but <laughs> you know it just it's it's a weapon that fedor has and I haven't seen any other player that can jump with the control and the success rate that Fedor Gorst possesses. Well, anyways, he's on his way to the double heel here. Nine just passes the 10. It's got about half a pocket. Yeah, float the nine ball in. Doesn't have a full pocket, but Inner you, would favor, half. you would favor most of the players to make this. Yeah, I think it's safe to say Maximilian Lechner is in trouble. Well, Max is hoping that he gets out of his chair. He doesn't want to see a good break from Gorst again. Because he may only be getting out of his chair to shake hands. Yeah, packed house here in the Kellogg Arena. All the teams in attendance. I mean, even behind us where they normally sit to watch or used to sit to watch hockey. A lot of people in behind us. A lot of people were walking up to the commentary box thinking this is how they got to those seats. We were going to pass them the mic. Well, 
Well, everybody watching in, on all the streams might be happy. <laughs> Fresh blood. And let's see, I just seen Viktor Zielinski walk by, so that could mean his match is over. It's not there yet, waiting on the result. Yeah, and you've got all that noise in the arena, ambient noise. These players, they they get that level of focus and nothing will distract them. So Feder talking to himself, almost like he's telling himself, please make a ball on the break. Well, he made four in the last one. Well, the one ball kicked in. Two ball got kicked, though. Could have ended up in an easier spot than this. Yeah, this is tricky, Tim. I mean, he's having a good long look at it. Not exactly sure whether he can attack the nine from here, maybe. Certainly safety options, but they're not easy either. Well, he can attack the nine. Yeah, and what a shot. He's on the two. If that three goes by the four, this is ominous. If that three ball doesn't go, yeah, I was just gonna say if he nudges the three ball on the top side, just soft, little bump. He should be able to continue his run. Yeah, he's got the perfect angle to take the cue ball that way. Caught it a little thick. Just okay to make the three, but let's have the angle to run into the four though. Calling his extension. Doesn't want to be rushed by any time. These are tense moments, certainly for Max Lechner sat in his chair. Can't afford to lose one more rack. So guessing he's going to cut this in and run into the four. We can push the four in front of the right side pocket. We'll have a nice bridge to go up to the five. But first, make the three. Well, he's done that, taking more risk though. He's, he's really punched it in and I'm thinking this run is over for now. Or is he gonna come up with another cracker of a shot? Cut this in the side and go three rails around for the five. It's the same thing, but on these uh, side pockets, I don't like it that much. What about the bank? Get the cue ball out of the way. What about the safety? What well, a was, shot. Was close getting behind the 10. I don't think he's got it, though. No, judging by his mannerisms as he goes back to his chair, I agree with you. We can now confirm. Viktor Zielinski has beaten Konrad Justissen 2-0 in sets. So Viktor Zielinski, our first quarterfinal. It's going to be looking to win a Pro B Series event. Has finished second already in the Bremen Open, in Ger Germany Open last year, I think it was. So caught it a little bit thinner and yeah, just a hair thicker and he would have gotten behind the 10, but it's always if, and it's not there. Well, if he knocks this in, he's got the perfect angle to drop onto the five too. This is all on the four for Gorst. 
not exactly sure what he's looking at. Is he? Oh, he's gonna shoot the four in the top right corner. I would love to shoot this in the top left and float the cue ball to the right side of the five. I was gonna say this play was scary. I really did not like this at all. It was automatic and, and natural position to float it into the left corner. Uh, you can color me surprised on that one. Well, it's still not over for Max, and if Max can stick the cue ball behind the seven, he's a big favorite then to win this game. Oh, there you go. This is a good shot, though, eliminating the left long rail kick. And I think that eight ball is very annoying to be kicking over the right side of the long rail. So he's, I think he's going to go over the short rails, call the four in the bottom left corner. Oh, and how close did he get? <laughs> he wasn't ever going to get on the five, but he was just guessing, hey, I, if I just hit the four from here, try to hang in there. Uh, not easy to get onto the five from here, though. He's I just am, asked for his extension. I am guessing he's going to hit the long rail three or four times, zigzagging over the table. So he needs to get close to the right side pocket now, bump the rail, cross over, bump the rail, and then get to the right side of the five. Just like this. Is it there? It is there. It's only what a shot from... Max Lechner. Yeah, only perfect. Even Gorst tapping his hands, acknowledging that effort. Now we're going to see a little bit more play. Just when it looked like Gorst maybe. Over the finish line in this one, not so fast. Oh, got close to the rail and, well, not straight on the eight, but it's not a great position. We'll have to settle for a longer 10 ball though. Still always expecting him to still get out, but once in a while, you're going to miss a long tempo. That's the percentages of the game. There it is. Still trailing three to two, Max Lechner. But he's definitely not going to complain after that missed four ball from Fedor Gorst. Yeah, we look at the table. We don't have the benefit of having a monitor. And so what looks like a natural angle to us may not always be a natural angle. And uh, again, very surprising it looked like it was natural for Federer to play that four into the top left instead of his choice of pocket but you just never see it exactly the way the player sees it well it could also still be preference though he likes to stun the balls around a little bit more I like to float the ball a little bit more so maybe he just preferred it a lot more you know just Common sense, so Tim, I mean, when you're floating the balls, the pockets are a little bit more favorable. Yeah, but your stroke has to be exactly also under the pressure. Could be a little bit scary, too, so in that way, there's many thoughts about it. The only thing that matters is he didn't go in, and yeah. Max won the rack. So trading 3-2, let's see what he does on the break. No, settle in. We got a little bit more pool to be played in this one yet. Change sides though. It's not was now breaking from the left side and the problem area is on the table at all.
Yeah, I think just getting the correct angle on the three ball to get to the four. If he plays a good two ball here, we don't really expect to see Max back to the table. Unless that missed four ball really caused some damage in Feather's head, but that's something we cannot read from the outside. Be hard to see him failing here. And how damaging it would be to his psyche if he did. Yeah, if he can get in between the seven and the five or a little bit more to the right, he can stay away from the ten. Bring the cue ball back up for the six. Well, at least he's going to stay away from the 10. That was the main thing, though. If you leave yourself more to the left, now you have to have to go forward. It's a little bit uncomfortable, but like I said, the balls are laying pretty good. And he's taking a lot of time, too, just assuring himself of exactly how he wants to go through this. Ooh. And that is also why I was expecting him to go over more to the right. Just to stay away from, from bumping balls. But on the other side, he turned out really, really good. Places with tough spin, maybe a, just a touch of left. You come straight over for the seven in the side and you should be done. You should be out. Then again, if he ended up straight, everything is so easy. Again, he's got that little awkward angle, so we'll have to move around more. Yeah, good shot. And yeah, he's keep, got keeping it simple, isn't he? I think he's also got a nice angle to stun. No, no, he's going forward, so he must be straighter. Go forward. You've got two diamonds to land in the top right corner. In the end, it didn't look like there was a comeback for Max Lechner. Good break, but just nothing going in. This is to get to the last eight. Feather Gorst. Planted to the heart of the pocket. Fedor Gorst, a 4-2 win on both sets, eliminates Max Lechner, and he stays alive through to the quarterfinals. These two friends can talk about the match, but I'll tell you, Gorst, for me, his jump shots were impeccable, and that proved to be the difference. Well, it was a great one, and there's still more action coming your way, folks, so stay with us. For Tim DeRoyter, I'm Jim Weich. Talk to you soon.